Hi, I'm Reed. This is Crowline Publishing, and today we're starting a new series talking about books, films, whatever, especially the lesser known ones, and stealing campaign ideas from them. And today we're going to do Heroes Die by Matthew Woodring Stover. Now, Kane, he's the great hero of Overworld, this to Tolkien esque fantasy world. He's led barbarian hordes, he's found ancient treasures, he helps turn the Emperor into a dark demigod, he's tamed the ogres. Just all around barbarian hero, always getting into adventures, sacking stuff, stabbing dudes up. Wherever he appears, adventure and chaos and action are soon to follow. And this is because Kane is actually really Harry Michelson. And he's a reality TV star. He's a man from Earth. Now eventually Earth finds another dimension, finds another world. So they send guys implanted with cyborg technology. They can record every feeling, every thought, every experience. There's a thing called monologuing where you specifically send messages to the audience. You go into this fantasy world where magic and dragons are real and the studio that sponsors this entire process says go and cause chaos. Get into dramatic situations, steal stuff, kill stuff, create political instability. And he does and he's very, very gifted at it. He's one of the biggest actors there is. And then when he's done, when he's got a good story out of it, he teleports back. And he goes and he returns to his life as a celebrity. And it's kind of like a wrestler or, a, or an athlete. He's quite famous and very, very rich. And the deal is, is that Kane and the other actors, well, they've caused a huge amount of strife on Overworld. Politically, they've, you know, they've assassinated kings. They've made barbarians attack civilization, all that sort of stuff. And there's also supernatural things they've done. They've kind of accidentally created a, a, an amiable dark god with the emperor. And Kane did that. Um, Kane has, uh, he's got a wife, uh, who is also an actor and she has gone and taken the powers of a goddess in one of her adventures. So the native religion is all buggered up and the cosmology is all buggered up and his best mate, uh, Carl, he is an actor who plays an elf. So he goes and he has extensive plastic surgery and then he goes to live with the elves, but he actually goes native, which has interesting repercussions in uh, the second of the four or five books in the K Acts of Kane series. Now as a novel. It is a violent action fantasy. There's loads of fights. There's lots of grotesque and even scatological imagery. But, you know, it's got that real dude energy, that real Jason Statham film energy. But the premise is great, and especially the sequel is actually really quite thoughtful. Uh, it expands on Kane exists in a classist hell of the future. Uh, imperialism and group dynamics and colonialism are big themes of the book. So it's not stupid. It's just dude, right? Um, I like it. It's grimdark, but it's smart grimdark. Now for a game, for an actual TTRPG, I think that is an amazing hook. So here's the deal is that here's how I would do it. You would make two characters, your actor. So you've got to think carefully about the kind of person who would train for years to become an actor. You learn how to be a mage, you learn how to be a warlock from virtual realities. It is all very, very intellectually learned for you, even though you're still trained to be a fighter, you still would train to be a barbarian or a paladin. And who are you that you want to make money and get fame out of horror and violence? Because, you know, people die, actors die, and it rates really, really well when actors die. So the studio is not always invested in keeping you alive. And you want to go and you want to do this for money and fame. And then your actor needs to invent their character. This is their fantasy version of themselves. You want to create this character like a wrestler creates a character. It has to be marketable, has to be relatable, has to be exciting, has to be something that you can put on a poster. Uh, you're not just a first level fighter, you're the warrior poet Mandraxes. You're Sarah the monk and you are devoted to the quest for the heart for all magic. You are the priest of the warrior gods and you will die in battle. Until then, you will shed blood to drown the land. Now, ultimately, these characters' job isn't actually to get gold. It isn't actually to get experience points. It isn't actually to do the stuff that normal PCs are looking for. They are looking for drama because that rates really, really well. And that means money for your real character, the, the actor. So you want to be doing daring rescues, assassinations, going after the most dangerous treasures in exciting and exotic locales that are completely trapped and just are going to be huge, tense things. You want to seduce princes. You want to disrupt peace talks. You want to do things that are rating winners because your actors are motivated by stuff in the real world, not necessarily in the fantasy world. Although, of course, that can change. Maybe you fall in love. Maybe you don't want to go back to the world. Maybe it's all gone wrong for you in the real world and you're desperate to stay in the fantasy world. But there could be problems there. Maybe you will explode if you stay for too long. 
Now, a good part of this campaign hook is the idea that you will eventually be playing your actors. You will eventually be playing real people in the real world. And if you are being told, here is $500,000 for your last adventure, here is $2 million for your last adventure, you are going to be highly motivated by getting that money. That's what you want. But a good DM will let people see the consequences of those actions. If you are continuously assassinating kings, if you are continuously finding great treasures, if you are continuously desecrating tombs that create cultural malaise, you are being a really, really kind of um, imperialist or colonialist figure and really messing up this world. Maybe that will affect your players. Maybe it won't. And I think that the juxtaposition between your actor character and your character character could be really, really fun. You could be a really sullen Conan kind of character. Uh, the crows are pleased with the blood that I have shed. But on Earth, you are a shrieking, absolutely spoiled diva. Do not make eye contact with Conan. Do not approach Conan. I uh, gave you some coffee. I said vanilla. That sort of stuff. I think that would be fun. Um, I think that you want to tell your players that you are in an ensemble show. We are looking for breakout stars, but you want to work together as a team. We are marketing you as a team. We want to sell you as a team. So in like in wrestling, when you look good, the other guy looks good. But of course, there's always going to be this underlying tension. Who's getting paid more? Who's the most famous on earth? And I think that that kind of uh, tension adds another uh, role-playing challenge that would be really exciting to play in. I think that you should do it as a sandbox game rather than a storytelling game. I don't think there should be a, an inherent narrative that the GM has. And I think that you should actually sit down with the PCs and do the first session as, okay, this is a production meeting. And the producers say, okay, here's the world. Here's the hotspots. Here's the interesting stuff that's going on. Here's what roughly we'd like you to do. Here's what roughly we'd like to package your first adventure as. But you're the artists. You're the ones who are on the land. You're going to have to react and create for us a narrative as best you can. I think that there's also a rather interesting way to structure your campaign worlds. Now, why you could just say, okay, well, we've discovered that the Witcher TV show is real. We're teleporting you into the Witcher show. Go mess it up. We're teleporting you into Game of Thrones. Go mess it up. But I think a, a, a more specific and fun way of thinking about campaigns is that you take one of the, what I think is fairly dreary Wizards of the Coast existing worlds like Forgotten Realms or Absalom or any of those sorts of existing IPs and you say, okay, we're going to teleport you in and we want you to mess it up. This is for when you are prepared for or even eager for massive derailment and damage done to an existing canon setting. You want your players to go, imagine the ratings when I kick Drist in the dick. Imagine what's going to happen when I put Raceland's head down the toilet and flush a bunch. That's what you are going for. And I think that it'll be a, a really fun way to uh, return to existing fantasy worlds and just destroy them for money. Let's talk about adventures. I think one of the fun things about a campaign like this is that you can always use adventure modules. You can play in the Temple of Elemental Evils or against the Giants or whatever, but your players are going to interact with it quite differently because they're looking for great shots. They're looking for great drama. They're not looking just to get the money and escape. Uh, I think that a fun part of the campaign would be that while actors are generally speaking impossible to detect in the medieval technology, someone eventually does. Someone eventually figures out that their world is under attack by an interdimensional race of fiends who come to this world specifically to cause chaos and havoc and horror to amuse their horrible masters and an acting purge is slowly but surely starting up. Maybe you travel back to Earth through a portal and something follows you back. We've got to remember, of course, this is a magical world. There are demons and elementals. So you pop into the studio, high five in the crew and the cast and then suddenly, oh, look, fire elemental and you are in the real world. You don't have your magical items. You don't have your spells. I think the other thing that's unique to this kind of campaign is that you are being directed. You literally have a GM telling you what to do. And maybe you don't want to do that. You've met with the Count. The Count's a great guy. You get on really, really well with him. Kill his daughter. It will cause a war. But she's 12. I don't care. There's money in this. Kill the girl. Oh, dear. Okay, wrapping it up, there is a game called X-Crawl in which elements of performative dungeon crawling exists. Uh, they've got systems on how to measure wealth and fame and that sort of stuff. You might want to have a look at a fantasy world-themed reality show called The Quest from about 2014. And then there are films like The Wild Hunt, which is where LARP turns a little bit Lord of the Flies. I liked it. And there's The Knights of Bad Aston, which I did. But there are LARPing-themed movies out there. Now, I've done these kinds of campaigns myself. I think they're huge amounts of fun. 
I think they are a great way to introduce complicated role playing into your campaigns, and especially if you have the kinds of players who are motivated and want to create really exciting drama and stories out of their role playing games, this is the way to go. All right. Heroes Die by Matthew Woodring Stover. Good book. Go get it. Why don't you give us a like? Why don't you give us a share? Why don't you give us a subscribe? I'm Reed Crowland. See you later.